Hi everyone. So uh, today, while surfing on Twitter, I found this very interesting article, and that uh, says that if you want to make airline sustainable, how are you going to do it? So just let's check this article. Uh, this article uh, says the headline of the article is like how to make air travel sustainable, and uh, for that you have to work on. carbon dioxide emission per year now as you know that around 3% of the global co2 emissions is there due to air travel so if we have to make it sustainable we have to see on least emitting flight and as of now it is uh, nowhere there near to it So now, how are you going to make it sustainable? Obviously, uh, we have to work on carbon footprint. And how are we going to do that? So uh, we have to work on the fuel, basically, because when the uh, plane is working it takes that lot of energy to lift people and normally you have to switch from traditional fossil fuel to the one from made from renewable resources which is i think you remember is the seventh number of principle of green chemistry so if we follow the principle of green chemistry uh, like lower emissions etc and all i think we can go with the sustainability so the first point could be to follow this second point could be to work on the new materials and the coatings which are used to make plane lighter and And more aerodynamic, and the third uh, could be related with the speed of the flight. Right now, I guess you know now supersonic flights are also there into existence. And now, if you increase the flight, it uses the fuel more. So today, we are going to see these three points. How we can work on them one by one. We are going to read these three in, uh, interesting articles. Let us quickly first start with shrinking jet fuel's carbon footprint. So now we have to work on jet fuel. Now, if you can see, a trash is there. and this uh, trash is taking up uh, that conveyor belt is taking the uh, these trash and it is going to be processed into a jet fuel so people are working on finding the uh, alternatives to the conventional fuel uh, and they no normally use petroleum based jet fuel but to make it alternative we normally blend it right so what are the options uh, in order to reduce their greenhouse gas emission how can you do that so uh, normally uh, people what they use is kerosene fuel and uh, that is actually a mixture of paraffins naphthenes aromatics and all so if you go by the right hand side fischer tropsch synthetic uh, paraffinic kerosene method is explained here very nicely you can find that uh, if you take these wastes uh, which are available here like what as alternative municipal waste agricultural waste uh, they can be treated as a carbon source and then you can oxidize them to uh, give you synthesis gas which is nothing but carbon monoxide and hydrogen and with the help of catalyst like iron cobalt and ruthenium uh, we can easily produce hydrocarbon and then you can blend the products with fossil derived jet fuels and before the result uh, can be burned in a jet engine and that is how you can have an option of sustainable aviation fuel so this is one of the approach in uh, achieving that uh, changing that existing jet fuel but we need to check that the properties are similar to jet fuel or not otherwise we have to change some specifications of our uh, plane now what are the possibilities like how can you do that so there are uh, basically three ways to do that the uh, uh, first way uh, would be uh, to use hydro processed esters and fatty acid which is hefa then second one uh, is a fischer tropsch synthetic paraffinic kerosene which i just explained you and the third one is alcohol to jet synthetic paraffinic kerosene now all three can be used uh, at a similar blend levels like you can blend them like in hefa what they do is they remove oxygen from the vegetable oils and all and then they treat the mixture with hydrogen to make it into hydrocarbon while in fischer tropsch so i just have explained you while in the third one alcohol to jet is like you have to extract the starch from sugar cane and corn and all so the seventh principle which is use of renewable feed stock that you can use and then you convert that starch into ethanol or fuel and then you can blend them and use it now when you are using it uh, the impact is totally different now if you can see here 
एल्कोहल टू जेट सिंथेटिक पैराफिनिक कैरोसिन एवरेज लाइफ टाइम कार्बन इंटेंसिटी इज फार मोर देन दैट ऑफ हाइड्रो प्रोसेस एस्टर एंड पेटी एसिड एंड दैट ऑफ फिशोड्रॉफ सिंथेटिक वाइल इफ यू सी एस पी के लाइक म्यूनिसिपल सॉलिड वेस्ट विच इज विदाउट प्लास्टिक इज फाइव ओनली एंड विद प्लास्टिक इज वन सेवेंटी फाइव सो ऑब्वियसली विदाउट प्लास्टिक इज द बेस्ट वन बट देन द टास्क इज टू रिमूव द प्लास्टिक फ्रॉम द सॉलिड वेस्ट सो दैट इज ऑल्सो अ टास्क बट देन दिस इज फिजिबल सो वन ऑप्शन वी हैव गॉट दैट वी कैन यूज दो स्ट्रैश मटीरियल नाउ सेकेंड थिंग इज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द फीड स्टॉक राइट so sometimes uh, some of the feedstock does not offer very many uh, advantages but there is one oil which you can directly use uh, like palm oil and your obviously the target is to reduce the greenhouse gas emission right so the first article uh, is almost done in this article what we have seen is uh, we can first work on the fuel basically so either you use the conventional kerosene fuel or you go with the fisher trop synthesis uh, or you blend them or the third one approaches you to uh, take a totally new one right now coming to the second one the search for greener airplane material because shrinking jet fuel is okay but then there is one more area like uh, composites now we all know that the aeroplane are uh, coated with some composites uh, and in order to reduce the carbon footprint we have to make it lighter right uh, lighter aircraft will uh, need less fuel to operate and burn so now if these coatings are coated on the uh, plane and if we make it lighter by them that would be a good idea right so the first one is uh, the area is cockpit window now here uh, heat resistance and uv resistant coatings are done right if you do it with a conductive oxide material then the pilots can apply voltage to that material to melt the ice of uh, the window and that saves desync time second is engines now here engines as you know that the temperature may rise to 1400 to 1500 temperature you need to uh, find out a compound which can sustain that much temperature and that is ceramic third one is related to fuselage now outside of the plane uh, obviously need resistance towards rust and the coatings which you can use here are polyurethane and acrylic and that also saves it uh, from the damage of uv light so here a uh, fuselage area can be researched upon coming to the fourth one which is nothing but passenger windows now those windows are coated with plastic and stretch acrylic so that they become heat and uv resistant so here also uh, the research has to go on to find out an electrochemical you know a layer so that that dim out uh, the light shade coming now coming to the fifth uh, portion of uh, the plane i hope you remember the fifth one was uh, landing gear right the last portion of the flight this is landing gear so while landing also what we need is uh, it should withstand harsh conditions so the coatings like diamond like carbon anodized metal etc can be used coming to the sixth one which is nothing but passenger seats now the seats has to have a recliner uh, option in them and that is why the coating there help them resist friction and wear now the last one is tray table now those tables are normally made up of plastics uh, in order to prevent food stain and they kill viruses and bacteria also and they are frequently used in a day so those materials have to have some kind of non stick coating in them and that's it so now these are the coatings but we have to look on corrosion protection also because that is the major thing it has to have some insulation and then you need to have uh, some decoration on the plane with the company's logo and all so while working on the coating we have to see on that portion also so to prevent corrosion corrosion inhibitor is the first thing normally uh, chrome is used but chrome is actually a carcinogen so for that also uh, the option has to be there so normally uh, now uh, less toxic or chrome free materials are there in boom and primer is uh, one of them with which is actually 20 or you know 30% lighter also than the chromated primers so that also is an option that you have to overall make it lighter but that how are you going to do obviously by changing the way you are coating it normally uh, when you use a spray that gives you uniform coating but you cannot save uh, the uh, you know weight saving cannot be done so the option is uh, what you can do is you can uh, simply dip the entire uh, 
your uh, apparatus in the solution and get it done so this is one of the option so let us go to the third one supersonic flight sustainability challenge now two options are done now the third one is related with the speed of the flight who does not want to have a you know faster time and reach on the destination early but that is costing us the carbon footprint if you can you know see this uh, gas guzzler at the right hand side you can see that the average mission fuel per passenger kg per passenger you can see that supersonic airplanes burn between 5 to 7 times the fuel per passenger that a conventional subsonic plane do so you can see that how much cost are we giving for that time which we are saving so here also we have to work on uh, the challenges are many we have to overcome the challenges in order to make the sustainable and a reliable plane so i think uh, you found the today's article quite interesting please do like it and if you are new to my channel do subscribe i'll keep on posting such articles in future also will give you the recent trends and uh, upload the same thank you so much